Where better to start tag teams and tearaways than with mystery man Nagasaki and man Mountain Quinn, an awesome new tag team combination threatening pain and punishment on our British heroes, Neil Sands and Tony Sinclair. Give the hand that time, surely, I think. I cling. Come on! Referee was right there, he didn't worry about it. Oh, yeah, that's a beauty. Inside of the forearm, followed down almost, no, not part of the same moves as referee. Absolutely right. Sounds making sure that Nagasaki stays in his corner. Five minutes to go, and it's kicked off again by Nagasaki. Every time there's a pinfall chance for Sinclair, Nagasaki comes to Quinn's assistance. People are waiting for him. He's right up there. He landed right on them. And his Sands comes in against Quinn. Should have an advantage here. No slaps or anything else there. Better up to the stomach. Head butts. And a bang. Head butt to the head. Bang head butt. And trying to keep Nagasaki away. This time, he manages it. Uh oh. No punches going on here. Sands now. And the little left shot. Sands almost falls into a cross cross position. No, no fall. His hand hadn't quite come down to the count of three. Or two and a half there. So Sands versus Nagasaki now in a tag. The mighty John Quinn and 
Tony Sinclair are both disqualified. Both disqualified, oh. Quinn disqualified and Sinclair disqualified. So it's up to Quinn and Neil Sands to continue this. So ladies and gentlemen, the referee has confirmed with me that counts as one fall to each side and the two remaining men will continue the match. So the match continues with one man in each corner and the first fall is the one that matters here because each team have got one score. Being a double disqualification. Sands has got to go some. Sands the only one without a public warning against his name. Nagasaki has won. Again, the flying headbutt by Sands. Nagasaki's corner. He hasn't gone back to the dressing room where he's supposed to be. There he is, standing by the corner post there. Going to help his man back in the ring. With his opponent this time, so he thinks his partner's got an advantage here. This is the Nagasaki special all the way over the top. Ooh. And that looks like Sands. Might be the end for him now. Yes, he's not going to make it. So Quinn and Nagasaki, the winners, by one disqualification and one pinfall, which turned out to be a knockout because he didn't beat the cops. pair Dave Fitzfinley and Rocky Moran with all the physical advantages against those martial artists the amazing Kung Fu and Iron Fist Clive Myers <laughs> too late. So it's Clive Myers getting out of the ring allowing Kung Fu to back in against Moran. Um, Moran took him from the back then but uh, the referee let him go because already his partner had felt a blow to Kung Fu from outside the ring. So it's Finley versus Kung Fu. This is the part that Chick Cullen has come here to watch. The Pete, the instep, flying tackle, on two on top, folding press, thrown off a two. his first public warning. Well, Finley with his first public warning, but nothing unusual for him. Paula is always coming right round to see what's happened to her man. Frank Casey having a lot of problems in the ring, keeping uh, Kung Fu back there. But finally, Finley is back in the ring. Paula is back in her position. And believe it or not, Rocky Moran is on his tag walk. Fifteen minutes.
minutes gone. Fifteen minutes. So five minutes left in this tag contest. That's still no score. Just one for the corner against Finley. Another base of the spiner. Follow up too late and a bad landing. Shoulder first into the corner post by Kung Fu. And another one right on that shoulder. And Kung Fu's shoulder in trouble now. Slam, cross press, and I don't think he'll get out of this one. No. Finley the first one. So 15 minutes, 35 seconds. Into the vault, the first fall to Finley over Kung Fu for the Belfast Bruiser. Finley comes up with that knee, one into the side of the head, but the left shoulder is the point that's worrying Kung Fu at this time. Finley goes in with a slam from the, from the opposite move slam, actually, and finishes with a cross press. Nice dive, but nice leg dive by Myers there. Hold him completely. And a headbutt. An unusual headbutt, but a headbutt... Did. Ladies and gentlemen, Clive Myers receives his first public warning. That's a public warning for it, and quite rightly, of course. <laughs> Looks like a punch, and he gets the public warning around there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rocky Moran receives his first public warning. Well, that punch was, he was caught punching, and now Moran goes to the whole way down. And Maya sees it coming, Moran lands on his back from that height. Tremendous posting to follow up the back speaking. There's now Maya going for the throw over the top, but he's too late for the cross press fall. And attack. In comes Kung Fu. Can't be long to go now. Just one minute exactly, in fact. Kung Fu versus Finley. Finley's team, Belfast team still leading. 1-0. And nice nice push. But can he follow it up with a quick score? It's going to be very quick. Beautiful. And Finley doesn't know where they're coming from now. And will he get his submission? And the lean back with the feet. And the folding press from the back. Beauty! He's got it. Or has he? Yes, Casey allows it. Frank Casey allows it. I thought he celebrated a bit earlier there, but there's the equalizing fall in. Just about time before the, the final whistle. see how he did that so we see he can really figure it out this time Finley goes down gets up by the ropes there Kung Fu waiting for him moves coming from every angle by Kung Fu and this is what caused the trouble as he took his man right back he hooks his feet under the legs of Finley takes him right over the top with him and a folding press and that's it there it is well that's a one fall each draw and it went the full distance very good entertaining tag I think to the grip Flying Fuji Yamada from Japan came, saw, and conquered world champion Mark Rocco. This was the rollable chance to regain his title, and we join it in round three. All perfectly legal. Shoulder foot, on the knee. And it's really a power lock here. His own version of the power lock. Anyway, Rocco's. Quite do it like Marty Jones or Andy Robin. And it's a burst. No, it's not really the power lock. It's a figure four leg lock with the arm. 
both arms holding it. To meet move, his right leg right through the lock. Still hoping for a submission. He's got a minute to go, Yamada. So you better get out of this. Don't you last in this one for a minute. Rocco had to give it up with him. Before he was up, or just about as he got it. Yes, as he got it. Legs under the bottom rope. Just under half a minute left. Round three. And again, that knee drop. Under his own knee. And Rocco looks around at me, he says, how about that one? He's got it till the bag. Didn't very much go. Rocco again going out. Rocco grabbing his belt to show everybody. That's the one he's going to get back here this afternoon. Trying it on for size. Four, 12 rounds to go. Still no score. Rocco seems pretty sure when he grabbed that belt from the from our table, commentary table here at ringside, and showed the crowd that's the one he's going to win here this afternoon. And maybe he's right. Maybe he will get it back first time. But uh, he certainly knows being about. Left shoulder blade knocked down to satisfaction of the referee, Mason. so certain at the end of that round three that he had him worried certainly slowed him down a bit <laughs> maybe I said that at the wrong time Walk straight into that foot beautiful turn started as a rolling arm landed him on his back with him This side of Arunada from underneath. That's going to be the first ball. He's got him. In one minute, 45 seconds. Round four. Yamada, the first ball. And what a beauty it was. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the opening ball of this title match goes right. to the defending champion, right from Koji underneath. Yamada. And this is how it all happens. Sends him to the ropes, so watch how Yamada goes back, goes to the back. There's a man over the top and from underneath holds that waist hold and no chance for Rocco. Back goes her over the shoulder, Rocco. Yamada just about slide down from that one. Caught in the left arm, inside forearm again as he came off the ropes. The third time you might have fallen for that one. Yeah. Missed him. Yeah. Trying tackle, Yamada. If he gets this one cross press, he's got the bounce. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely over the top, cross press, yes, he's got it. It's just the nice there, all right. Meet your gun just inside the ropes in one minute, eight seconds of round six. And the equalizing fall to Rocco. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an equalizing fall in round six. And it goes to the challenger, Rollable Rocco. And let's have a look at how that he 
did this. Rucker really at the wrong end of a lot of this but round. But look away. He comes back by the foot first. Follow up. Double arm suplex. Over the top. Cross press and grab the leg. And that's it for Yamada. The equalizer in the sixth. Second away. Round seven. Round seven. Nine to go. One fall each. One public warning against Rocco. I'm not quite sure he's talking to. He's looking at me. Talking to the rock and staring at me. the corner where Mark Rocker got his public warning just now. Oh, I dropped it. Seemed to be in the air for seconds there before it landed. And he's going out after him. Referee counting them both. He spotted the punch. Outside the ring. Up and Yamada going to heights again for the truck hit this. The ring looks like he's going right through there. Oh, out over the top, waist out of the top rope. Walker gets a quiet trophy too from the left there too. Yes, and Yamada now from behind, almost getting him in the position that he got him last time. And he's got him. No. Rocco had the advantage of the ropes there. One minute to go. Round seven. Crutch hole. Rocco. He's going for the power driver. There it is. And a follow through, cross press. And it looks like Rocco's got him. He's got him. Rocco gets his title back in round seven. It took him just two minutes, 15 seconds of round seven to do it. With a pile rider. Well, ladies and gentlemen, round seven and the deciding fall. Now Yorkshire's handsome heavies, the Taylor brothers against a right pair of ugly villains, Muir and Chang, a brace of baldies in the thud and blunder tradition, and a referee's nightmare.
for five years as a bodyguard to a top professional gambler, a Chinese gambler. Ten, ten was, minutes. Ten minutes. Pretty useful guy to have around, I should think. The lieutenant has already given one public warning. Another one coming up. He continues that. Dave down in the long corner for him because he wants to get over to his brother. He's inside of the forearm. Okay. As long as he doesn't use the ropes to leave. And Chang in trouble here, and he's got him. First ball to beat Dave Taylor over Chang. Well, let's see how Dave did that. Neat move from the ropes. Thrown to the corner. This time he doesn't get posted. Races back for the cross press, and that's how he got the first one. And so the opening call of our tag match to the team in the blue corner, the Taylor Brothers, Steve and Dave. And it took him just under 11 minutes to get that first call in this 40-minute tag. Still about 28 plus minutes to go, so any second now, the start of the second session. Seconds away for the second session. And of course, it's got to be Dave Taylor continuing against Shang. to play with at all. Chang has only got two before he goes back to the dressing room, so they better start thinking of that before they bend the rules any further. So Dave Taylor waiting patiently on his ropes, advising his brother, but Steve is in trouble over this side of the ring. And Chang standing over him and waiting for him to get. There's the, there's the backbreaker over the shoulder. This is his favorite move, and as the equalizing submission for Chang over Dave, over Steve, brother. And it just took him 13 minutes, 40 seconds, to get that equalizing submission. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an equalizing fall in the tag match with a submission to the right corner. There's the towel, he's got to go again now to prove to the referee that he tagged. But he did the first time. So it's Chang versus Dave. And the scores are level now, one call each to number. The next one is the decider. Oh, lovely control. I don't know why they can break the ring. Dave Taylor coming on the high road to crash in from there. Oh, you all the way down. And he's straight on his stomach. He's not a happy man at all. Another backdrop. And Steve 
Chang's going to try the same thing off the top post this time. Uh, but this time Chang getting up very quick in case. But there it is. That's the cross cross by Steve Taylor. Can he hold Chang down? He's gone off, but Muir had to come into the ring. And uh, the referee's allowed to continue. Muir came into the ring and saved his partner then. Muir goes on. Steve Taylor. And Chang weakening by the second. Kick, right foot for him. There's the back breaker over the shoulder of Chang's favorite. And Muir holding the feet down. And if the referee says, yes, it was a submission. If the referee allows it, it's a submission. So in just 17 minutes, 45 seconds, it's a two to one win by Chang and his partner over the Taylor Boys. John Harris. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your referee's decision, it applies to both men. The red corner, the team is disqualified. Now, a catchweight classic, Dave Fitzfinley flaunting a two-stone weight advantage over Danny Boy Collins. And Collins carrying the scar of a recent operation to remove a kidney. Two falls to the side. Paula checking in that drop kick result. Referee Al Mason, the former professional footballer, with Everton. Finley has decided to come out and really get on the straight stuff. In round two, it took a bit of a battering in the first round, didn't like it. And it's going straight for the scar. That's where the scar is, he's showing everybody. But he won't do him any harm with that now. Pressure points to the side of Danny's neck. <laughs> Legal as long as the Thomas don't get over the other one tied. And then they're going to have a straight fingers. Just a beautiful counter. A lovely quick flip. Straight fingers again. A little bit suspicious there, Mason. There. And the yellow card is coming out. Just a reminder, didn't show the card officially. That's, that's a typical move by Finley now. He's got the weight to hold him. A lovely stretch by Danny, tremendous stretch. But Finley sidestepped him as Danny came right at him. Again, the pressure points. And taking the man down. Base first to the A drop hole and a drop kick with a knee. Very unusual and let's see how effective it was. I was waiting for the feet to come out, but they didn't. The knee came up and managed to follow through cross press and trouble for Danny here. And the first ball to the bigger man from Ireland. Finley in just two minutes, 35 seconds of round two. Ball it back with a smile on her face now. Lee Bambler to announce it. Ladies and gentlemen, in round two, it's the first ball of the match in favour, Pitt Finley. Now let's see that again in slow motion, see how it's it happened. Danny just gets up from the canvas. Then he goes with one of his reverse throws. And the full weight of Finley right on those shoulder blades. Danny can't move. Seconds away, round four. 
Here we go, officially for round four. Finley having attacked far too early. seconds of round four, the equalizing fall, Danny Boy Collins, and, and here it is now, the, watch this again, the posting, Collins goes in, high up as if he goes to a monkey climb, but he goes back instead, which fools Finley to come forward, the reverse throw, and that's it, the folding cross press, beautiful, beautiful move by Collins, and he's back in the game now. One fall each with four rounds to go. Second away, round five. Halfway through the box. Now Polo, now he exits. Through the crowd, one fall each, and the crowd very happy that Danny Boyd has come back to the Eagles. And what a beauty it was! His first thing around this is was a baby, and a yellow card to Collins here. Danny Collins, this is his first public warning. So, public warning to Collins. Beautiful timing again. Another posting. Finley takes it. Four on smash over the top. Ed Mayer. And the landing with a good tour. Oh, Finley goes over the top. He's got the metal, but that's it. And a beauty. Lands flat. Headbutt over the top, and I think it hurt Finley as much as it did Danny Collins. Five, six, which one's going to get up? Seven, eight, nine. Collins is, that's for sure. Finley, no, neither of them up. Neither of them up. Finley didn't make it. Still on his knees. Looks like a double knockout decision here. In just two minutes, ten seconds of round five. What a finish. Yes, the match they've all been waiting for, the showdown of rival world champions. No title at stake this time, but everything in terms of personal pride and reputation. Back over to the face. And now John's pretty mad. Now John is pretty sore now. So Rocco backs away a little for the moment. Oh, 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 oh. So far, Rocco having quite a bit of his own way, but I cannot 
not see it lasting up with Mary Jones in the opposite corner. Half a minute to go, well one. And Jones taking his turn of throwing it. Rocco out there. Well, I don't think I've seen quite such a start to about as that five minutes there, that first round. Incredible start. Even before the, buck, the bell went, they started. Round three. Round three, six to go, no score. One public warning against Rocco. Rocco, of course, on the left there, as usual. Red gear with the white stripes. Starred boots. Blue knee protectors. <laughs> really colorful character, this Rocco. <laughs> I thought he was going to use that towel. Rocco gets out for a moment and he seems to look in Jones' eye. He shall stay away from here for a minute. Or until he turns his back. Back elbow, stomach. Oh, nice drop kick. Sliding drop kick. Well under the bottom rope. But twice in my life I've seen that one before. Really good. In one minute and eight seconds of round three. Marty Jones, the first ball. And that's it. Round three, and it's the first ball of the match to Marty Jones! Right, the end of round three. Any second round now, the start of the last five rounds, and Rocco's got time, but he doesn't like being one behind. So, Marty Jones leading Mark Rocco, one fall to L at the start of the fourth round. Five to go. He'll bring out a few punches now, Rocco. Just no sign at all of Mark Rocco's seven-hour back operation, the way he's fighting here today. Remarkable recovery. He was at death's door for four days. He was in the hospital. Intensive care for three weeks. And there he is. Tough as always. What a comeback. And taking on a man over a stone heavier than he is. And one of the best in the world. No count here because he was a legal, a legal put out there, so. The referee Frank Casey doesn't bother to count that one. Tries to stop him getting under that top rope, they're both on the top. <laughs> well, Mark Rocco has got the uh, equalizing fall, but I think he's paid for it a little by the look of his forehead. We'll have a closer look at that in a minute. It's wiping the blood away, not too worried. Seconds away, round five. He's had it now. So Lee Bamber, our MC, will try and get a word in in a minute and explain to us exactly what has happened. A double disqualification or maybe just Jones disqualified. We're not sure at ringside here.
qualification so no contest the fourth man attacking the referee you're both disqualified one fall is draw then we're attacking the fourth Yes, pride drives champions, and especially heavyweight king Wayne Bridges. But challenges don't come tougher than the man in the opposite corner this time, the masked mystery man, Kendo Nagasaki. And Bridges just about makes it back in time to go out again. So still no score. Straight to the throat, a good one. Robert, and the throw nicely over the top. Can he follow up with a cross first? Not this time. And a miles late. He's so late. Bridges coming back with punches now because uh, he's taken so much that he's delivering a few punches now. Great headbutt to the forehead there. Flyer by Bridges. Now he's the head there and the knee drop guillotine. Bridges thinking seriously but trying to be masked like a Saki already. And a cross press bridges. He's got it first on. Despite his troubles, bridges gets the first ball in round four, and it took him one minute forty seconds. In round four, the first ball to Wayne Bridges. And Wayne Bridges wins the fourth round by
Now Bridges must have been weakened a bit surely. Touch hole, slam, and down he goes on that throat or chin. Really looks as though he's going to finish Nagasaki off time. Didn't take his chance. And over the top, nice crash, yes. Hanakazi crash, that's one of his uh, special moves, and Bridges in trouble from it. Uh, he's out, I think he's not going to make it. Bridges not going to make it. He's up. Oh, is he? Down again, getting counted again. He's only up at nine then. Still about 40 seconds to go in the front. Seven. And the referee will get a little trouble now as Bridges goes for the cross press on Nagasaki, but the referee's not there to call him. Bridges wants the referee there. And it's Nagasaki attacking from the rear as he brings the referee. The Reigns gets a cross press and trouble for Bridges. And the Nagasaki has got it. In comes George Gillette, a happy man, the manager of Nagasaki. Wayne Bridges doesn't like it one bit, slams Nagasaki. But he's lost his title again, which he did to John Quinn once. And Max Beasley for a match, a result official. because he was talking to the referee and helping the referee up when Nagasaki attacked him. This is naturally fuming man. Nagasaki, a happy man. And his mascot there with him, young Ian of Nottingham, a happy lad. One of his greatest fans. So a new World Wrestling Alliance. Heavyweight title champion, Kendo Nagasaki.